So good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Julian Buzas, and uh, I'm working for uh, Collabora as a multimedia software engineer. Uh, I joined the company quite recently. I uh, joined about seven months ago. And since I joined the company, I've been working with uh, uh, Pipeware. Uh, we have uh, a client, which is uh, AGL, Automotive Great Linux, and uh, we, we are working on a project based on Pipeware. And this conference is about, um, uh, it's about Pipeware and how we use it to uh, solve our clients' problems. So it's going to be like two parts. The first part is going to be about Piper, and the second part is going to be explaining how we we provide a solution to them. Okay, so let's start. So what what's Piper? What's this new technology everybody is talking about nowadays? <clears throat> so have, has anybody heard of Piper before? Okay, so I guess I can leave the conference. <laughs> Okay, so um, <coughs> Piper is something very simple. Uh, it's a project written by uh, Wim Tiemens, the creator of Pulse Audio. And um, it's essentially uh, a generic multimedia framework to handle multimedia devices in a computer. So it's like Pulse Audio, but for video as well. Um, and it has also some features that Pulse Audio does have. So with, um, it's basically like a demo. It's, it has exactly the same structure as uh, Pulse Audio, but you basically run a demo. Then th that demo detects all the multimedia devices that your computer have. And um, then when an application connects to it to play uh, buffers, to play like video buffers or audio buffers, they just tell a Piper, I want to play these buffers in this format, and um, Piper just manages all of that automatically in the background. Okay, so as I said before, it does format conversion. I think I think we have a problem with the display. Hold on a second. Okay. So as I said before, it does format conversion, mixing, and reposition. It's pipeline based design, similar, a little bit similar like this streamer. Uh, it has some security um, features. And uh, as I said before, it does what Pulse Audio does and more stuff. In fact, the uh, original name of uh, Piper was actually Pulse Video, and it was only supposed to handle video devices. But then we uh, did a lot of research over the last two years, and he started including um, you know, audio features uh, inside Piper because he thought that he could handle audio in a much better way than Pulse Audio does. So he started adding these audio features and um, he, um, he realized that Piper was not only for video anymore, and he, it was more like a generic framework. Um, so he named it Piper. And with now, actually, you can basically capture video from uh, cameras with Piper, and also you can capture video from uh, a s genome shell screencast. You can, and obviously, you can do playback with, um, uh, with audio uh, and capture with audio. Uh, replacing jack and pulse audio. So if you have a look at the multimedia stack, we can think of Piper as a middle layer daemon that runs on top of the kernel and um, behind the uh, application, multimedia applications. Um, so Piper creates some nodes, uh, usually it's one node per device found by the kernel, and the, the um, multimedia applications, they basically <coughs> connect to these nodes and they start pushing buffers. Now, if two applications are connected to the same node, uh, so Piper handle all of that to play both of them, or depending on some 
configuration files, so it's going to cancel the other one and things like that. So, so let's have a look at these uh, nodes there and uh, these ports uh, closely. All right, so, so we have different nodes in Piper. Let's say we have like three different kind of nodes. We have the gray ones uh, and the red ones, which are basically device nodes, and they are created uh, as soon as uh, a device is found by the Linux kernel. Now these nodes, they usually have one port with a specific format. Uh, think of ports like Distreamer pads and the nodes like Distreamer elements, if you're familiar with Distreamer. Uh, and usually this format is exactly the same as the format that the device accepts. So, so it creates just these nodes, it doesn't do anything else. And then it also listens for uh, applications connected to Piper. So we have another kind of nodes, which are the yellow ones on the left. And these nodes, they basically, they also have ports with the format specified by the uh, applications. Now, if the, fo the, f the format is not compatible with the, the ports of the, um, of the device nodes, Piper can automatically create uh, other nodes, conversion nodes, which are the blue ones here, uh, the DSP mixer and the uh, eco cancel. They basically do conversion of um, buffers, usually raw data, like raw video buffers or raw audio buffers. But all of this is configurable. So, um, so it's up to, to the session manager, which is an external application, to decide that logic. So when a client connects, who decides the logic? Who, who's going to link the nodes? And if you have like multiple audio devices and you want to play something on your computer, who decides what default audio device is going to be selected? So, so all of these is actually not done by Piper, but by an external uh, media session. And Piper provides an API to do that, but that's a separate process. It's, a, it's like a binary that the user code using the uh, Piper API to do all of that. So with the, with the external session manager, uh, users can set up devices. They can set up the format, the mixers, the effects, they can create links between the nodes. Uh, they can grant security access and control for clients. And they can uh, prioritize devices, which is the uh, policy of the uh, session manager. Uh, since this is very um, user case specific, there's actually no gen generic logic to, to decide what device is the best to, to play. So for example, if you have a, like multiple Bluetooth speakers connected to the computer <clears throat> and you start playing music on your computer, so do I have to play Bluetooth audio on the Bluetooth speaker? Do I have to play both on, on the ALSA device, on the speakers of the, of the uh, computer, or, or only ignore completely the Bluetooth speaker, only play on ALSA? So, so this is, <clears throat> the, there can't be like a generic way to do that, and that's why it's not included in Piper. There is an example if you check out the project, that's only used for testing and it basically links uh, to the first also device you can find, but that's, as I said, as I already said, it's up to the user. We are gonna go back on that later because this is why <coughs> we choose to use Piper for AGL. Um, and it's actually, I would say it's probably the biggest selling point of Piper because with Pulse Audio or any other sound system, you can't do that. You, ha you, you have to actually hack into it to, to, to do this kind of logic. So as I said before, let's move on the features. And um, in Piper also, that's not present in Pulse Audio. Uh, we have uh, security permissions. So each client can be made to see any entirely different graph. We have read permissions. We have um, write permissions and executable permissions. Okay, it seems stable now. Um, yes, so read permissions 
allows a client to read buffers from a um, node. Write permissions allows a, uh, a client to write stuff on a node, usually to playback. And um, execute permissions means uh, clients can execute some methods in the node's API. For example, they can set different formats so the node can handle different um, formats. And the session manager, as I said before, it's responsible of applying permissions. So the design of uh, Piper is very <clears throat> extensible. It's similar to most of uh, the multimedia open source projects. Um, it has modules. Uh, each module represent like a driver, um, like for example, video for Linux for video, also for uh, for audio and Bluetooth for uh, Bluetooth speakers. Uh, and then we have plugins <coughs> which are part of each module. So we can have plugins that do uh, audio conversion, video conversion. We can even add plugins to do encoding and decoding, but, but that's, for now, I think that's out of uh, the question because it's not focused on that, but technically it's possible. Um, now these plugins Piper has, they, they are based on on SPA, which is uh, a library that is also inside Piper. It's a very simple library. <coughs> Think of glib, but much, much more lightweight. It has extremely lightweight data structures, and it's a he header-only C library with zero dependencies. So uh, as Wim says, it's like glib, but not so heavy. And uh, th thanks to that and many other design uh, improvements, the uh, performance and efficiency of Piper is um, pretty impressive. Um, so, because it uses modern Linux uh, kernel APIs, so it uses memfd, dma buff, to zero copy buffers from the device to the actual memory, and then it uses eventfd and timerfd for scheduling and waking up process. <coughs> Thanks to all of these features, the latency when doing playback or capturing from a device, usually it's less than 1.5 milliseconds uh, on desktop. And it has a much, much lower CPU users than Pulse Audio. So to prove that, Wim and George, uh, my team leader, has made a, uh, has a benchmark test. So they have test a playback of 24-bit 96 kilohertz, uh, 521 channel file, uh, down mixes to 3.1 and re resampled to 48 kilohertz. <coughs> so four measurements has been done. Um, so the first one, um, it, it, it has a, uh, I can see. How much is that, 0 0.2 uh, CPU usage? And then the, the second and third one, they have uh, 2.3 and 2.7 CPU usage, and the last one has 6% uh, CPU usage. So the, me the measurements were, for the first case, uh, we were sending buffers uh, of 1,024 samples per buffer. So the latency were 21.33 milliseconds. For the second case, we reduced the size of the, of the buffers to only be 64 samples per buffer, and the latency is below 1.5 milliseconds. The latency is also about the same for two clients, and the latency is again about the same for uh, two clients, but uh, with a CPU pin at 800 megahertz. This is the hardware where the um, test has been done, and if you want to compare with, with Pulse Audio, with uh, small bu buffers of 64 samples per buffer, uh, Pulse Audio uses 100% CPU and fails and under runs. Right, so, so we have now uh, this uh, cool um, multimedia framework, but to use it, we, we need to change all the multimedia apps, right? If you want to integrate, but since that can take a long time, there's also uh, compatibility APIs uh, that Wim has done. So there is um, an ALSA plugin that basically does the bridge between ALSA API and creates the Piper nodes to 
to basically push data into Piper. Then for pools audio apps, there is a, a lib pools uh, on the uh, uh, submodule on the uh, GitHub project that basically generates a library that can be replaced with the original lib pools to send you know buffers to Piper. And the same for Jack apps. So with these modules, we don't need to change any uh, current multimedia applications to use Piper. So who's behind this? Um, the author is Wim Timmons. It's a very well old GStreamer developer and ex-maintainer. Uh, he's sponsored by Red Hat. Uh, Pulse, uh, sorry, Piper is embraced by Pulse Audio developers because it's seen as the next generation of Pulse Audio. And it's also welcomed by ALS and Jack developers. Uh, it also has the MIT license. And the current status of it is uh, version 0 0.2 is uh, distributed in Fedora and many other Linux distributions. However, uh, it only handles video so far. The new version, which hasn't been released yet, uh, it's, it's planned to be released at the end of this year, uh, has a lot of improvements. It has uh, audio support. Uh, a lot of refactoring has been done, so the API is going to break again. Um, it has Bluetooth. It's, it's starting to have Bluetooth support, even though it's not quite stable yet. And um, it's actually the version we are using for automotive-grade Linux. Okay, so now we are on the second part of the talk. I'm going to talk about um, how we integrate Piper in um, automotive-grade Linux for connected cars. So as I said before, we are using um, the latest version of Piper, which is not, uh, which has um, the audio support. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So how, how do you how do you set up? Yeah. This one here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so well, as I said before, I'm going to explain now how the uh, automotive grade Linux um, works with Piper. Uh, so as I said, we are using uh, the version. 0.3, which hasn't been released yet and has support for audio. Uh, so before they were using Pulse Audio, but since uh, it has a lot of latency, it's quite heavy, they, they came to us and they wanted a, a simple solution maintained by the uh, uh, community. So we offered them pi uh, Pipeware and um, we started writing our own uh, session manager for Pipeware to handle all the logic and the permissions and all of that that I was explaining before. So we created a separate project called uh, Wire Plumber, um, and it's uh, merged in version uh, 8.0, Happy Halibut, um, and it's about to be released uh, at some point. Uh, and we also plan to integrate video in the future. So Wire Plumber, is the first session manager for um, for Piper. It's only currently targeting for uh, embedded use cases. So we will see about desktop in the future. We try to make it as much configurable as possible with uh, configuring files. Um, it's not stable yet. Uh, it's module and extensible like Piper, so we, we can only use it for some modules, like only for video, or only for audio, or both. And it's also based on GObject, and this is uh, to support writing modules using bindings in other languages. It, uh, it has, it introduced some concepts, like endpoints, 
factories and modules. Um, an endpoint is uh, a it's close. It's a close definition to post audio representation of sync source uh, source outputs and sync inputs. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's basically the end part of a graph. And um, it, or maybe if you're used to the streamer, it can be seen like a bin with the different nodes that handle any kind of conversion uh, and any kind of linking logic. <coughs> And also, the Piper proxies and properties, they are uh, wrapped into glib so that uh, it's much friendly, um, it's easier to use them, because uh, people are more used to glib in the genome community. So this is um, a uh, software DSP endpoint uh, representation. So as you can see, as I said before, it's like a bin in the streamer, and uh, it creates uh, different uh, DSP pipeware nodes to do conversion, and also add controls. Like for example, if you want to change the volume of uh, an audio stream, um, so when you create an endpoint, you can actually set up the endpoint to have uh, as many streams as possible, because sometimes when you Usually, the most used cases in a car is to um, to have different streams, one for multimedia, if you are listening to music in your car. Then you have like the GPS, so that would be the navigation. And then you have the emergency, so what if you want to listen to all of that at the same time, but maybe uh, with less volume uh, the music and more volume in the navigation. So all of this logic is handled in, um, in this endpoint bin which is basically a set of uh, streams uh, put together and, uh, and linked together with, uh, with Piper nodes. This is, only, this is obviously only s the, the conversion is done in software, but we also have the hardware DSP endpoint, which uh, George started implementing it. And it's basically the same as before, but the uh, conversion is done using the hardware, the Unisense uh, board from AGL. <coughs> so so um, since Piper supports plugins, the way to do that is to create a plugin in Piper that basically connects to this hardware device and send buffers. And uh, the endpoint is basically an abstraction of all of that. And the, the session manager connects to these, um, to these endpoints by just uh, by just like like a regular endpoint, doesn't need to worry about uh, what kind of endpoint it needs to link. Um, so that was the more like the general idea of why creating this concept. Right. So the policy management <coughs> um, decides. The policy manager is the part of the session manager that decides. Um, how to link the nodes. Um, so in Wire Plumber is fully configured with uh, TOML files. Uh, there is a default configuration, but users can change that. So the default configuration is that clients have roles with priorities. Um, so higher priority wins, last uh, equal priority, last one wins, and ordering other apps is automatically paused or restored when you know. Um, I don't know, uh, navigation starts. But all of these can change by just changing some uh, files. There's other areas that need uh, work. Um, so one area is to finish uh, the Bluetooth audio support, because at the moment um, it only works mostly with uh, A2DP profile, which is um, high quality audio sound when playing music through a speaker, or uh, when you want to send um, buffers, audio buffers from your phone into, into the computer and play a song in your computer, so that the p computer can act as a speaker. But for example, HSP profile, which is used for communications, it's not uh, finished. And uh, at the moment, you cannot use the phone to, to have a conversation with the phone and use the uh, speakers of the car. Um, Again, the Unisense hardware support is planned for 
it's not ready yet, but it's planned for uh, AGL 8.0.3. We need to improve the API and make it stable because we are always figuring out uh, what's the best API uh, we can have because why Plumber is also a library that allows you to define different policies. So we, we are trying to create a very stable API um, and I think we are quite close, but um, yes, so that's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, we also need to add better security handling because at the moment Y Plumber grants all, um, all permissions to all clients and obviously documentation so that people can start um, maybe contributing or um, start using it and give us some feedback. Um, that's uh, pretty much the talk, but now before starting the demo, I'm gonna also explain w some work we have done, uh, me and George, over the last uh, four months in Piper. So George uh, created uh, a new concept in Piper, which is an audio stream. Uh, it basically, it's basically an application node linked with, um, with a converged conversion node. Um, because all clients need to do that. So yes, it takes the input from a client asynchronously, it does the conversion, um, resampling, mixing and all of that, and also it handles flush and draining. Then in just, he also wrote uh, a Piper audio sync and Piper audio source elements on GStreamer because the current uh, elements um, in um, in the master branch of Piper, they don't really work very well with audio. They only work uh, with with video. So um, there's some timing issues there, and uh, he created different different elements only meant to use uh, with audio. They are not merged yet, but uh, the uh, merge request submitted, and uh, we are using them for AGL. Uh, you can see more details in that link. Um, and they are all built using the uh, streams, the previous streams API. Uh, some of the work I have done in Piper is uh, Bluetooth support. So when I started, Bluetooth only could work with um, HTTP sync um, profiles. So basically it was only working with Bluetooth speakers, but it wasn't working when connecting a phone, for example, to Piper and playing some audio from the phone on the computer. So that has been done. Uh, and then work has been done uh, on the HSP and HFP sync uh, profiles. I have it mostly working with a headset. Uh, this profile is mostly used for communication, uh, for live uh, conference and stuff like that. Uh, so the audio quality is not as good as obviously uh, the HTTP sync profile, but um, but yeah, technically uh, you can hear some stuff if you connect uh, a Bluetooth um, headphone, and the laptop can act both as a head unique or um, or the headset can actually ha uh, act as a unit. So for example, if you connect your laptop to the phone and you wanna speak to a friend, you can speak to, to your computer and that's gonna be redirected to the phone or you can do it the other way around when uh, when you have a conference on the computer and you have a headset. Okay, so now if, um, if this doesn't blink anymore, I can show you some demonstration. So um, I'm gonna run so um, yeah that's I'm gonna run here
the Piper daemon. Okay, so it's running now. It has created all the nodes. We don't see anything here because um, by default, Piper doesn't print anything. But um, we can actually see all of that when running the monitor. So let me first run now the session manager. So I'm going to run uh, Y Plumber, uh, which is a process that uh, is uh, charged to link all the uh, nodes when uh, an application starts. Okay, I'm running it. Um, and now we can have a look at all the uh, objects that uh, Piper has created. So I can use a, there's a client uh, to basically uh, inspect all the status of uh, the Piper daemon. So I'm running the client. I'm going to connect to the uh, Piper session that is running. Um, okay, so um, there's several, co it's like a shell, and there's several commands to inspect, or you can even create nodes manually using this client. Um, and um, you can obviously list remotes, and uh, you can disconnect and you can get info from objects. So I'm going to list all the objects created by uh, Piper. And we can see that this, uh, every object has an ID. Uh, so there's 158 objects. Um, this is because uh, Wire Plumber also creates uh, all the DSP nodes uh, needed when converting formats. Um, so yeah, basically, you can see these up client uh, ports ports and if we go up we can see nodes here for example uh, and there's a node for every um, role defined uh, in the endpoint so this is the navigation anyway this, yeah as I said before there's a lot of um, a lot of objects created in the daemon. So um, now I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna run uh, a GStream pipeline to play some audio, and it's gonna be automatically, the Wire Plumber session manager is gonna automatically link it with the default um, Alta device, which is the speakers of my computer. Um, I'm gonna play us. The pipe the pipeline is actually this one. Um it's basically a file source. The location is just a song. Um it's doing a web parse, uh audio convert, audio resample, and then it's pushing all the uh, buffers into um the element George created the Piper audio sync element. Okay, so it's using that, and now I'm gonna try to play, um, connect another client, and uh, the session manager is gonna stop this current client because it's defined like that. But again, the user can change all of these configuration. So I have here. Uh, another terminal. I'm gonna run just a basic uh, scene wave, um, test. which is basically a uh, audio test source and uh, Piper audio sync. Again, so you now you can hear only that, and the other client is paused. Now I'm gonna cancel that, and we can hear the other clients playing. <coughs> and. Uh, yeah, we could play both clients at the same time, so all of this logic is completely configurable by, by the session manager. Let's oh. close this. And go back to... Uh, 
Okay, and that's, uh, that's all for the conference. Uh, by the way, we are hiring at Collabora, so if anyone's interested in working with uh, Piper, it's your chance, I guess. <laughs> uh, any questions? replacement for uh, the pulse audio self profile stuff so when I have a slightly complex also uh, output path where I have multiple la layers of volume management in the output mm -hmm. do I get it right that I would have to do a hardware DSP module for pipewire for that uh, so so sorry can you repeat so what's the replacement for pulse audio when right the uh, the um, the controls the volume controls and all of that so um, so you have to write that in uh, the session manager um, so Piper doesn't uh, do any of that that's uh, up to you to use the Piper API to do that yes so Piper basically just expose the nodes and that's it and then uh, externally, you basically use the API to um, to basically do all these volume controls and all of that. That's the the replacement is basically the session manager. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, but from from the diagrams um, you have shown, mm -hmm. I understood that. Uh, there, there's lots of software modules for yes. doing the volume management oh, yeah, yeah. or mixing or mm -hmm. stuff like that, mm -hmm. but. Uh, if I want to do that in hardware, because I have hardware mm -hmm. support, for example, doing volume management, um, would I have to write a plugin for the hardware, or is there something I where I can? Uh, well, well you you would have yes, exactly. So you you would have to write a plugin uh, for Pipeware that uh, creates the node. Yeah. Yeah. So you would have to do that. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, there's no at the moment the. Uh, current status of Piper doesn't do any hardware conversion. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, regarding video, when you have media controller, devices that are very complicated that requires to connect a lot of devices and mm -hmm. you have resizers and all that kind of things, you're going to rely on live camera or, or you plan that the user makes a plugin? Uh, well, at the moment it's only using the video folding API for the camera. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I think some work are doing to to do uh, screencast uh, recording using Wayland and Mesa. So um, yeah, I'm not really sure about that. But yeah, the only uh, stuff that is merged upstream is um, video for Linux. I think yes. Yes, but there is a slightly non-existing plan to do live camera at some point, mm -hmm. but no one has done anything. <laughs> um, so maybe you're not the right person to ask this, but can you comment on why uh, MIT license was chosen? Uh, I'm not sure sure about that, but I don't know. Probably because it's you have more permissions than the um, uh, um, than the BSP one, the other one, uh, GPL. So, is it, uh, do you probably know you can include it in, um, in private software. Probably that's the main uh, reason, I guess. Uh, but maybe, maybe Olivier know more about that. <laughs> so, the next question is: Do you know about uh, already know about commercial extensions? No, not being publicly available. <laughs> uh, the the license was chosen at the request of a very large corporation, which does a Linux kind of Linux operating system. <laughs> 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 uh, 
who doesn't like the GPL? All right, any more questions? Yeah. Okay, so the first, this, you can give it to me. So I was curious about the uh, low-end embedded systems. You mentioned that every uh, input in the pipe wire uh, elements behaves like a GStreamer sync and handles uh, format conversion and all that stuff. Yes. Um, can you somehow explicitly control that? Because some formats might be better fit for a really low-end embedded systems than others. Is there something like caps filters in GStreamer? Uh, well, yes. This like cap filter which um, well there's no caps filter okay but there's there's only uh, two elements one is the audio convert element and the other one is the um, video convert element and they uh, at the moment they only work with raw data so uh, the caps they are they are different than the streamer because they are actually structures with uh, with all the format information and they are not strings so the negotiation is, is basically much much faster than the streamer because it doesn't need to compare a string. Um, but again, it's um, it's a structure and um, yeah, you ha it's at the moment it only supports uh, f um, raw data at least for audio. Maybe maybe for I, I didn't actually check the video because uh, I think some cameras they don't output a raw video. Um, but first, because maybe it's too, if you have like a 4K camera, that's maybe too heavy. So they probably output uh, in some different uh, encoding format. So for, for video, there's probably some, you know, encoding um, format down there. But again, it's, uh, it's a structure, it's defined, it's pretty fine. So it's not a string, it's not as flexible as the streamer. What about testing? How do you do automated uh, automated testing? And uh, are you have you, do you have people in charge for testing? Or well, regression tests especially. Well, there's um, the the project is uh, uploaded on GitHub, and there is a a, a testing um, framework there, a testing CI. So every time you push something, it's tested. Well, but um, it's basically running the unit test. That's the only thing it does, and. Uh, I'm not really sure what the unit tests do, but they basically uh, run, <coughs> yeah, uh, the daemon, and then they run some examples of uh, clients, right? So there's like many, uh, many um, uh, executables that basically just uh, send buffers to Piper and another m many others that they just receive buffer from uh, from Piper. So so far, and for example, testing Bluetooth is there's no testing allowed for Bluetooth because you can t connect a Bluetooth device into GitHub, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I guess we miss testing that manually. Um, but the most of the uh, the audio and video, they unit test for that, and every time you push something, it's tested with, like I said, you know, they run the daemon um, in a very simple, uh, I guess, Docker image. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's it. Okay, so uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, seeing this conference and uh, I hope you like it. Yeah.